Hey, I'm Spinny Chad, and welcome to my continual quest to beat Kerbal Space Program 2 using only aircraft. And besides traveling across Kerbin in this episode, we're going to be taking a quick mission to EVE and maybe even making an SSTO out of a B-1 bomber. But before we do all that, we're of course going to have to pay the bills with that EVE mission. It's going to be a very simple probe that just drops down at the atmosphere of EVE, using it to uh, aero break down at the surface and hopefully land softly, kind of like the Venera missions in real life. Um, it's a very tiny rocket and we attached it to our very old SSTO at this point. This is our very first SSTO in a series, but it's been upgraded to the point where it's nearly unrecognizable. But it is fairly reliable for getting uh, payloads of this size in orbit. Especially this one. This is even smaller than uh, most of our other payloads. And with good reason, because you don't really need that much Delta V to actually get to eat. We're going to go ahead and release it once we get into orbit here. And you'll see just how tiny it actually is. This thing is absolutely minuscule, and that's because, well, one, you don't need a lot of Delta V to transfer to Eve since it's the closest planet to Kerbin, and also, Eve has a very, very, very beefy atmosphere that you can use for arrow breaking down to the surface, so we really only need enough for an encounter, and Eve's atmosphere should take care of the rest. Speaking of that encounter, we're looking for an angle about like what you see on screen there, about 55, 45-ish degrees behind Kerbin, and of course, we're going to leave Kerbin in the retrograde direction to lower our orbit down to Eve. And after another bout of messing with the maneuver node planner for far too long, we do eventually get a very rough encounter with Eve, so I just completely roll with it once we do. And I also kind of miss the maneuver node completely, uh, but everything can be fixed somewhere along the way with a mid-course correction burn. And of course, you know, we have to get that essential and beautiful shot of us leaving Kerbin, and we fast forward to our little correction burn there to get an encounter with Eve. I was hoping to get a fly by of Gilly, but we just went directly to Eve, and the second we touched the atmosphere, we got a whole heap of science. And what do you know, that's going to be a very, very reoccurring theme for this mission. This was a quite profitable mission indeed. I did, however, make our periapsis around Eve a bit too high, and we had to do a bit of an emergency burn to get it a little bit lower so we didn't have to do a million arrow passes. Uh, but we did end up having to do a lot of arrow breaking passes. We did disconnect our little probe now. It now has no way of propelling itself, but it should get a nice orbit around Eve just from the arrow breaking alone. And by the way, keep an eye on that bottom science number as we gain more and more science because that's the only one that we can actually get back out of this mission. The top science number is for recovering science uh, through like sample returns or through a Kerbal coming back home. We get a very tall orbit. Like I said, I should have made the periapsis a little bit lower, but I was afraid I would just die in Eve's atmosphere. So after approximately a metric ton of arrow break passes, we finally get one long enough to actually do a science sniff test in the upper atmosphere and got so much juicy science out of that. In our sixth pass of the planet, we're finally ready to dip down into Eve's atmosphere and hopefully land safely. We're going to be going down here at over 3,000 meters per second, which is uh, quite scary to say the least, but luckily the atmosphere is thick enough and we are so light that it just really slows down in the upper atmosphere, like really high up, like 44,000 meters up, and we gracefully fall back down to the surface and deploy our parachute. And as you can imagine, such a lot probe with such a big parachute on a planet with very thick atmosphere took quite a while to get down to the surface. But you won't catch me complaining because I absolutely love Eve. It's purple, and if you've noticed anything about the channel, I like purple. And as we land very gracefully, might I add, on Eve's surface, I'd like to give a nod to the devs for actually adding collision to that little panel on the solar panel there. That is insane. It actually just pushed our craft up. I had no idea it would actually do that. I thought it would just clip into the surface. But holy Jebediah, Kerman's junkyard, that is a lot of signs. So after I transmit it back over to Kerbin, we're going to go ahead and head into the Mission Control Center and cash in the mission related to this mission. And just go on a casual 5,000 science shopping spree. And now we're going to pick up the most useful node that we have gotten thus far. It has a whiplash engine. Dart engine, advanced nose cone, big landing gear. This is going to make making SSTOs so much easier. We go ahead and pick up Xenon as well, and we head over to Mission Control where we're going to do this mission. Going to Stargazer Point. And since I'm still kind of traumatized from the like three or four hours of flying from the other episode where we went to Cappy Rock, I want to build something a lot more fast. And what could be better for this, a long distance, fast mission than a B-1 bomber? So I decided to build something akin to a B-1A, but somewhere along the line, my primal instincts kicked in and I made this into a SSTO. Yeah, I'm not kidding. I made it into an SSTO, a B-1 SSTO. I don't know why I did it, but uh, you know, it's one more SSTO in the pocket of the Smoothie Chad Aerospace Industry, whatever the heck our name is here. Um, and cue the Todd Howard meme because it just works pretty darn well. We added two Aerospike engines on the underneath there, and I just couldn't resist myself. We had the parts, so why not make it? 
And actually, a side note about this, the swing wings, which only swing inside the VAB, actually help you balance out the center of lift to the center of mass, which changes with the different payloads. And we actually got into orbit with almost a thousand Delta V to spare with a 6.3 ton payload in there. But of course, we're going to make a normal B1B version of this and not make it an SSTO. And that's what this looks like. And now we're going to get actually back on track for our mission, which looks a little bit like this. We're going to be basically going in a straight line southwest down to the island chain where Stargazer Peak resides, which is about a 700 kilometer trip, not nearly as long as the one to Cappy Rock, luckily. And now we have a much, much faster plane, but that is yet to be determined how exactly fast it is, because I've done some very minimal flight testing to this, but it does fly very, very nicely. And I started this flight right around sunset, so we get a good view of the navigational lights that I added to it. And of course, it looks beautiful uh, during the uh, sunset here with the cloud tops painted in beautiful shades. And then we kicked in the afterburners, baby. And this thing goes very, very fast. It barely breaks Mach 1 in cruise mode, but with the afterburners on, we were getting speeds up to like Mach 2.3. Mach 2.3 at 30,000 feet is a lot closer to the B1A rather than the B1B, so I guess you could say this the recreation is kind of a mixture between both of them. And for our purposes, this is a very capable aircraft regardless. Uh, we're going to be flying here in absolutely no time compared to the last mission, and of course we're packing payload this time, something that the uh, last aircraft that we were using just didn't really do well. <laughs> Uh, my best attempt at it was packing things on the wings, which is suboptimal to say the least. And if you're a fan of the Lathe Wars cinematic series on the channel, you may recognize this bay as being the one that the pirate attack happened outside of. Actually, we're flying over that point right here. And if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, it's a cinematic series and community-driven project on the channel, and that's where we get all of our maps and uh, most of our names from for the stuff in this series. But back to our flight now, we're now within around 100 kilometers of Stargazer's Point, and I just could not resist myself flying treetop level with full afterburner zone. We were going nearly Mach 2 when we came in on that sweep, but gradually the soupy atmosphere down here does bring us down to a little bit under Mach 1 eventually. I had a blast doing this and I nearly crashed a few times, but I feel like this is exactly what Jeb would do if you handed him a B-1 bomber and told him to fly it across the globe. But now we're within 50 kilometers and we get our nice little waypoint there. Unfortunately, I can't come up with a cute name for it like the last episode, so it's just a waypoint. <laughs> um, this, uh, by the way, if you don't know what Stargazer's Point is, it's basically Devil's Tower from Wyoming in the US. It's basically the same kind of object, this weird rock tower thing. Uh, but we fly even closer to the ground now, but now in cruise mode, so we're not even going Mach 1. What's the fun in that? <laughs> and uh, this thing actually is farther back here in the mountains than I thought it was, but eventually we do make sight of it, and uh, it's huge. It's absolutely huge. Nice flat spot on top, and uh, I'm immediately going to turn around and come back at it and try to do our mission. And the original plan was, was to drop a lander can with Bob in it. Yes, Bob has been in this flat the whole time, if you didn't know, uh, but Bob kept crashing into the side of it, or just completely despawning, which is a little bit worse, and you'll see here there's no Bob back there. He completely despawned the second that we got within 2.2 kilometers away from him. So uh, we try again and again to no avail, and we nearly crashed a few times, <laughs> um, which was quite fun. And it's at this point that I got to thinking, there's a flat spot on top. Why don't we just land the whole plane? And the more I thought about it, the more that became my only option. So we began the process of trying to land a B-1 bomber in like a 100 foot runway, basically. <laughs> Luckily, we did have the parachute on board, the one that goes to Bob's lander can, that is, but thanks to Kraken Science, it still works the same and glitches through the back of the aircraft and slows us down. So we're going to make heavy use of that, and uh, we had a almost successful landing here, and then it turned into a VTOL B-1B, uh, so I guess that's a thing. This one was uh, somehow more successful because Jeb landed on top. But then we had the nail biter to end all nail biters. At first we came in a little bit too low, but then we activated the engines with the parachute and was able to actually bump into the tower to lose the rest of our velocity and then just bounce down and land. It's that easy, folks. Just land on top of this Devil's Tower uh, Stargazer point thing. Just land on top of it. It's that easy. This totally didn't take me an entire evening to do but I did have fun doing every single bit of it, I have to admit. So, uh, Bob's lander can's completely useless now. I even put some rover wheels on it, but none of that matters now because we're landed up here, so we get our mission that way. So, uh, 
I guess this is the theme now. I've got to do uh, crazy landings for all these missions. I sure hope not, because I'm not good at those. <laughs> But we head over to the R&D Center where we pick up some extra dog equipment, and judging by the missions that we have left in Mission Control, we're going to have to really step up our game for the next episode. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that one, because that is unfortunately all I have for today. If you really like this video, you'll definitely like the rest of the series, and you can check out the last video or the next video, depending on when you're watching this, on the right side of your screen there. You can check out some pictures sent in by viewers just like you in my Discord over there on the left side of your screen. So check out my Discord server if you haven't already. This is a very caffeinated Smoonie Chad out.